This was the last thing I was expecting to see when we walked into the thrift store. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. And if you haven't watched my channel before, this pink Victorian inspired love seat is the gorgeous big sister to the one that I inherited from my grandmother and sit on when I film all of my floss tube videos. I had never seen this larger version of it and I am absolutely smitten. It is so pretty. And if there was any possible way that I could have justified paying what I am pretty sure this thing cost, there was not a price tag on it, but compared to the other Victorian love seats, which we'll get to in a minute, I imagine it was $500, if not more. And it's not a practical piece of furniture. The one that I already have is not practical. I only justify its existence by the fact that it's a family heirloom. Mine was purchased by my great aunt Molly in 1978 for, I believe, $275. Somebody, when we were cleaning up Grandma's estate, found the original receipt for it. I had always assumed that it must be older than that. So either it is much newer than it looks or the receipt we found was confused and the information we're going by is wrong. Maybe she had another pretty pink couch with a similar description. I... I'm very strict with myself about not screaming with joy when I see amazing things at the thrift store. And I was good about it. And so was my daughter. That's her you see at the edges of some of this video footage. I also did not send pictures of this to my husband and ask him if we could get rid of our existing living room furniture to make room for it. Honestly, that's because if we were going to get rid of our existing living room furniture to make way for gorgeous Victorian stuff, it'd be this set. Guys, it has birds on it. And that subtle white floral upholstery and the size and the shape of this whole thing, that must be seven feet long, if not longer. I have spent way too much time over the past two days imagining the room that would be perfect for this set. And the chair has identical upholstery, but the carvings are different. The chair has faces on it. This is the furniture of my dreams and makes me desperately wish that I had a house with a formal living room that I could somehow justify having this in my life. My daughter called her husband and sent pictures and they actually, I think, did some serious discussion about whether they could make this fit into their life. The decision was that it was really, really expensive and not, would not be well suited to gaming or their lifestyle. So I tried to console myself by drooling over some vintage Pyrex. I don't know the name of this pattern. I'm sure one of you does and if you could leave it in the pattern comment section below. I'd appreciate it. It just seems so wonderfully bicentennial and I love all of the imagery on it. Not enough that I would spend $20 for it. Maybe I will stumble across one someday at an estate sale or maybe I won't. I am totally fine either way. I have a collection of vintage Pyrex. I love it. I use it but I won't pay big money for it. And I have no idea what this is worth to collectors. I could be walking away from the steel of the century. These milk glass goblets I saw in probably every store we visited in our afternoon of thrifting. We spent the day going through different thrift stores. I came home with an hour of footage that is going to be cut into three different videos. There's a ceramic blue boy, the boys and I, we're talking about Pinky and Blue Boy the other day, and I suppose the only reason I know what they are is because my grandma had framed prints hanging in her house while I was growing up. We have a weird fruit rooster like that one at home. 
I don't know why. It was a gift from Grandma because she knows we like roosters and that's not, that is the weirdest rooster. And this horse and wagon, apparently there was some horrific accident in their past. I hope that that case opens up so that somebody can get those poor little horsies back on their feet again. Love the imagery of this plate with the castle and that fancy border. And more milk glass. There was in it, there were the goblets and there was just so much milk glass. These frosted glass barware cups are not the ones I'm looking for. And I've said this about similar ones at a different store recently. I think they're by the same company that made the ones I am trying to track down. Look up Mod Family Barware and you might find the family portraits with Horace Mark Deceased with a noose hanging in the background. We had those when I was growing up and I would love to find them again. My daughter was puzzled and intrigued by the ceramic pitcher shaped like a frog. As near as we can tell, his arm is the handle and you pour out of his hat. This little cookie jar caught my eye because if there is a cookie jar shaped like a house or a barn, I'm guaranteed to like it. And the cat teapot is just so pretty. It's possible that people who don't drink tea don't need teapots. Lots of jello molds. I think those are grapes. I am still trying to figure out what to make in the cornucopia jello mold that I found for my son. I saw on Pinterest that you could bake cakes in them and want to do a little more research and confirm that. Let me know if you know if that's true. These have such amazing detail and I'm sure that that is something somebody made and not a mass produced whatever it is. Love old scales. I keep seeing everyone make the ones out of Dollar Tree stuff, and I like those, but I like the old original ones even more. Here's a piece that I wish my middle son had been with me because I wonder if he would have spotted the cornucopia or if this would have been the first time in years that I saw a cornucopia before he saw it or before he lured me across the store to make me see it. More milk glass. I really love the shape of these. I haven't seen anything like them, but as I've said before, I am not a milk glass expert. They could be super, super common and I've just never been looking in the right direction at the right time to chance upon a set of them. Here's some old decoupage. I wasted too much time trying to come up with a connection between the little girl and the little boy and then the woman on the bottom. They're in the same style and of the same era. They just seem kind of oddly mismatched. And here we've got decoupage John Wayne. He was very shiny and hard to get a picture of, but he was kind of cool. And while I was distracted by him, my daughter was finding the black velvet clown. I suspect that a lot of what you're going to see next came from the same place. And I suspect it was someone's dorm room because we're in a college town. Here's a very shiny clown, more decoupage. And then this little girl, I was so tempted by her. But it was just a piece of cardboard in a plastic frame, and I talked myself out of it, but I might regret that later. Here is another creepy clown. Some of these are more creepy than others. And like I said, I've never seen so many of them in one spot at the same time. So I'm betting they came from someone's collection. Here's a little girl surrounded by her pack of dogs and yet another clown. These were all on the same shelf within about six feet of each other. 
And then there was the spice rack. I have never seen one of these. My daughter says that she has before. And each spice had a building from a different country or culture. It kind of reminded me of the picture book that I had as a child called Come Over to My House. I would love to see the full set. I would love to have the full set. If you watch my videos, you know that anything that is shaped like little houses catches my interest and makes me happy. They wanted for what was here. I think my daughter said the tag was $100. I can't even tell you how much fun we had drooling over those sofas and the clowns that are totally worthy of the clown motel. Part two will be coming soon.